Hello everyone, this is Jayendra Prasai. I am a software engineer at Red Hat India and in this session I will be showing you how a developer or an organization can implement DevSecOps capability into their projects using a single platform that is CRDA platform or also known as Code Ready Dependency Analytics platform. So here first of all we will see the overview of DevSecOps then what are the problems faced by developers when they need to decide their dependency stack? What is the solution we are proposing? And how CRDA fits in here? Or how CRDA is able to address all these problems? So first of all, what is DevSecOps? It stands for Development, Security and Operations. And this is a concept which says that security has to be checked at every phase of software development lifecycle. It means when software is being developed, when it has been tested, when it has been deployed, and when it has been delivered to the end user, at every step, security has to be checked. Why so? So that we can avoid any kind of data loss, any service outage, any unauthorized access or any security violation can be avoided here. And one of the way to ensure that, that having a, a reliable stack, it means that the dependency stack we have should be vulnerability free. So how do we get a reliable stack? Let's see that in the next slides. So now come to the pro we come to the problems that when developer need to decide the dependency stack. So what are the main problems they face? First problem here is that how do a developer know that this is the right dependency? There are already thousands of packages available in the market and every day there are new packages or new versions are being released. So out of all of them, which one is the right dependency here? Second problem comes with the licensing terms that you have your stack. In that stack, every dependency has its own associated license. Now, are those licenses are compatible with each other? Are there any restricted license? Are there any outlier license? How do a developer know that? And the third and the most important thing here is that the dependencies added by the developer should not have any security vulnerability. It means if you are adding a new dependency or you are upgrading to any new version, so you should not introduce any vulnerability to the your stack. And this is the problem which mainly goes unnoticed because many times developer doesn't uh, think about that and entire development is done and maybe later some point of time somebody noticed it that this stack has vulnerability and now the developer is forced to actually fix that now developer has to either use different version of that package or maybe change the package itself and because of this there is a chances that you also need to change the code base because maybe the functions are changed because you change the version or change the package itself so the you have to actually re rewrite your code then it has to be tested deployed then that cycle goes again and it is a very time consuming thing so how do a developer know that the dependency they are using is actually a vulnerability free and the last problem here is that there are many packages available for the same thing for example we consider json parsing so there are many packages available for the JSON parsing. Now out of all those, which one is well maintained, which one is properly upgraded or there are many number of contributors for that one. How do a developer know that? So we have a solution which can actually address all these problems. That solution is code ready dependency analytics powered by Red Hat. So this is a platform which can actually address all four problems we have seen in the last slide. So what is CRDA? CRDA is actually a platform which can provide you vulnerability and compliance analysis for your application. It will help you to like find the vulnerabilities and fix them. And it is not just the vulnerabilities. It is also the licensing details. It is also the 
popularity of that package it is also some add-ons like is the, are there any recommendations there so all those things can be provided in a form of a single report and by seeing that report user can actually decide their reliable stake or they can dis reach up uh, they can make sure that dependency stake is vulnerability free so how does crda work here so is in the first slide in the devsecops what we have seen that the security has to be checked at every phase of software development life cycle so for example we come up with the product development when a developer is starting build pro, build of that project or, or actually i should say the a project building is started now at that time when you are using some id then user can actually make sure that packages are not having any vulnerability at the time of development itself when you are adding a dependency or when you are deciding you are a dependency stack at that time itself you can actually analyze th those vulnerabilities uh, or you can analyze that entire stack and make sure it is a reliable stack so we have our extensions available with some of the very popular uh, ids in the market which is uh, vs code and intellij you can actually install our extension there and you can uh, use the capabilities of uh, crda into those ids or if you are a cli expert you can use our cli tool and this cli can use by other platforms as well for example you have some environment where you can write some scripts and you want to test the vulnerability of your stack there you can use this cli tool you can call few methods from here of that cli and then you can actually analyze those dependency in that environment also if it is a, some environment which is not available here there is some third environment here so you can actually use this also now when it comes to the pipeline we have completed our development now we are ready to deploy it at that time in the pipeline some of the very popular pipelines are like github workflows are there jenkins is there tecton is there so we have our github action jenkins plugin there tecton task is there which can actually give you the analysis the exact same analysis what you see in the ids so uh, when you are actually creating your pipeline you can implement this uh, crd actions or task or a plugin there and then based on the analysis report you can decide that whether to pass this build or fail this build do you whether to deploy this uh, build into the cluster or roll back so these kind of decision can be taken while building and deploying the application now we come to the third phase which is the containerization now your development is ready your build is done now it's time to deliver or it is time to containerize your application so after that also you can scan for the securities we have clear plugin there so clear can actually scan the image it can find out the dependencies used inside that image and then it can analyze those using crda and then you can see that this image is actually having some uh, vulnerabilities and if you push those images into Quay, so there also CRDA will kick in. It will analyze that image and it will tell you that this image is having some vulnerabilities. If there are any present, you will get the flag. So by this, you can actually analyze your stack at every step of software development lifecycle. When you are building it, when you are deploying it, when you are containerizing it, and it has been shipped everywhere you can actually scan for the dependency now let's see how crda works here so let's start with the development side uh, we have ids there we have plugin you installed our extension there and now you can scan there so whenever you actually create a manifest file or whenever you edit any manifest file whenever you open any manifest file at the time crda will kick in it will check for the dependencies and you will get an alert if 
there is any dependency which is having vulnerability there is some security issue you will get an alert let's see how it looks like so here there is an here is an example of uh, maven manifest file which is pom.xml and this is how you show a dependency there so this version of the dependency is vulnerable you will get an alert there is a red line you can see when you go there it will show you few details of that vulnerability and it will also recommend you a version if you switch to that version this vulnerability will be resolved so like this every vulnerability of your manifest will be scanned and if any of them are are having any uh, this issue you will see those alerts when you are creating your manifest file itself so you can actually fix those when you are building your application or when you are actually creating your application you had started to develop the application at the time itself you will see so there is at the very beginning of this cycle you got these details now you can fix them right now itself that so that this problem doesn't go further to the next level now as we have seen for the vulnerabilities but we discuss about the other details also other problems also related to license the problems related to popularity of that package and you want to see that as well so you can use a feature called stack analysis of crda in this one we will analyze not just the direct dependencies also the transitive or some people call it as a indirect dependencies of that stack and we will show you the analysis of that entire stack and then by seeing that you can actually decide that whether you want to use this dependency whether you want to change the stack you want to alter that stack everything you can decide so how does that entire report looks like it has multiple tabs uh, we'll start with the first one which is security issue card so here it shows all vulnerability related data and this data is taken from SNCC. Now here the question would arise that why SNCC? That is because SNCC is one of the very uh, reliable and very advanced vulnerability database available in the market. And if you use CRDA, you don't just get access to the public vulnerabilities but also the vulnerabilities which are private to SNCC. Now, what is this thing? So it means that if there is any vulnerability which is found by SNCC, it is not right now publicly available. SNCC actually got that and reported that this uh, package or this version is having uh, a vulnerability and it is detected by SNCC only. So right now, till the time it is not publicly available, it is private to SNCC. Eventually, in future some point of time that is also that will also get public but till that time it is available only with this link so if you use crda you will not just get access to the public vulnerabilities but also the private vulnerabilities so in this card the first thing you will see is the total number of vulnerabilities and the total number of dependencies which are vulnerable there might be a chance that a vulnerability uh, a package is having multiple vulnerabilities so you will see both of them here now as we have discussed about the public and private vulnerability there are two tabs if you want to see the public one you go to the left if you want to see the vulnerabilities which are private to sneak you go to the right and then you will get a recommendation for the non-vulnerable version so what is it it shows you that this is the current version you have which is vulnerable and we are recommending you another version if you switch to this one this vulnerability will be fixed or this version is not uh, having any vulnerability so you should consider upgrading your version to this version then we will also show you some other details like severity score uh, cvss score exploits vulnerability id and if you want to read more about this vulnerability you can actually click here it will take you to a page where entire detail of that vulnerability uh, is present you can read it you can understand that what is wrong with this one then the second card here is dependency detail card so in here you will see all the direct 
and the transitive vulnerability details. It will show you that how many direct dependencies are there and how many transitive or indirect dependencies are present in that stack. And then you will see the latest version as well that this is the version you have and this is the latest version available in the market. So you might consider switching to the latest version. And then there is also GitHub statistics which will give you some detail about the popularity of that package. So it will show you that how active this repository is, how many contributors are there, how many folks are there. So based on that, you can actually decide that whether this uh, uh, this package is uh, well maintained or not, whether you, you should consider switching to some other package. All those details you will see here. Now the third card here is the license details card. So what it has, it has a suggested license. What does it mean? That you have a dependency stake in that one. Each dependency has its own license. Now according to an, our analysis and based on the combination of licenses available in that stack, what should be the license of your application? So we are suggesting you that based on our analysis, this should be the license of your application. So you should consider giving that as a license. And here we have one more thing which is license conflict. So what it does that it shows that there are this many depend uh, dependencies out there and uh, uh, maybe two or three or multiple uh, licenses are not actually compatible with each, other, with each other. They are conflicting. So you should consider resolving that conflict there should not should not be any license conflict the licenses should be compatible with each other so you might consider changing the packages and fix that uh, conflict and there is also one thing called unknown license so what it is means that either a license is very new or there is some weird name given many times it happens that developer give their own some license weird license name so for some reason that license detail is not present into our system so we show that as an unknown license but it is not that it will always be unknown for us once we notice that we have some unknown license we would actually analyze that uh, license we will study about that and then we will add that license into our system so whenever next time you run you will see details of that license as well <laughs> Now the last card here is add-ons card. So it is actually AI based recommendation card or AI based, AI based companion recommendation card. So what it does, it shows you that according to our AI model, we recommend you that this package has to be added into your stack. And then we also show the confidence score here that how confident our model is about this package. So if you see that it is highly recommended, so you might consider adding that into your stack. And then also we have our one feedback option. So we, we are showing you all this analysis. We are showing you all this recommendation. And if you like that it is uh, properly given, you can give us upvote. And for some reason, if you don't like it, you can give us downvote. And then based on the uh, feedback, we would actually like to see that what is going on. and. We will make sure that it is fixed for uh, uh, now onwards and then you get a better response from CRDA. So we have seen that how this thing comes as a uh, development cycle or as a development step. In the IDs you will see this report but obviously when you are running that into a pipeline or in some image then it is not possible that you uh, that developer intervention is not possible there. It's not possible that you see that report by your own eyes and then decide because in the pipeline it might run in the midnight or any time. So there we also show our output in a different format. We'll see that in the next slide. So this is an example of GitHub action. It means when you run it as a pipeline or as a GitHub workflow, how you will uh, use CRDA. So there is a task available for CRDA uh, or there is a GitHub action available for CRDA. You would uh, include that into your flow, it will run. 
and the output will show as a form of JSON. So this JSON is also a consolidated summary of that analysis. And then you can decide based on this uh, JSON. For example, if you say that total number of vulnerabilities are more than 10, then you fail this build. Or if you add some other dependent, uh, some other criteria that if those are low vulnerabilities or low priority vulnerabilities, uh, okay, fine, ignore that. If it is high uh, vulnerability, then you might consider failing it. So based on your criteria, you can write some condition and then you can decide whether to pass this build or fail this build, whether to deploy this or roll back. And you will also get the report link. So the report, what we have seen in the previous slides, uh, you can actually go to that link and you will see proper detailed report there as well. It's not like it's just a consolidated assembly. You will also get the complete report and you can analyze it. And then based on that, you can actually decide about the quality of the build. And now as we are running short of time that uh, we cannot consider uh, seeing the other extensions also. Uh, but the links of all those extensions or a plugin is available here. You can actually go to those places and you can download or install them. And then you can give it a try. So this is how you can achieve the DevSecOps capabilities into your projects just by using a single platform that is Code Ready Dependency Analytics by Red Hat. Uh, so this is it from my side. If there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you.